Okay, so now we've found the quantized energy levels for the particle in a box, and we need to find the um, normalized wave function. So we basically have, uh, now we have a, a good starting place. We have our general wave function here. We found that B is equal to zero, and so this term goes away. We're left with this uh, uh, amplitude coefficient A, and uh, now we can substitute in for our k's, these kn's, which are given by this expression here, so they're quantized. So the, the um, wave numbers can only take on certain discrete values as given by this relationship. Okay, and, uh, and now we need to basically find um, a particular, the particular value or values for, uh, for the uh, amplitude coefficients. So again, we start here in this, in this, and now we notice that, I mean, I've written, um, I've written a, um, a subscript n for the coefficients because there's, uh, we have to allow for the, for the possibility that the amplitude coefficients are different for the different wave functions, okay? And I've indicated, uh, I've reminded ourselves that, that we have a um, quantized uh, d uh, system by putting the quantum number n uh, as a um, subscript and so basically you'd have uh, psi 1, psi 2, psi 3, etc. Okay, so how do we find the amplitude coefficients? Well, we, um, we basically have to normalize the wave function. That is, we know that the particle has to be somewhere in the box. Okay, we know it can't be outside of the box. So if we integrate the uh, the uh, probability density, which if you remember the probability density is equal to psi star psi, where psi star is just the complex conjugate of the wave function. In this case the wave functions are real and so the complex conjugate is just equal to the wave function. Um, and if we integrate that over all space, um, then we know that we have to find the probability, that we have to find the particle somewhere and so the that integral should be equal to one. Okay, so that integral over all space actually reduces the in, the limits of integration reduce to zero to L because we know the particle has to be in the box, can't be outside the box, and now we plug in our quantized wave functions uh, right there. Okay, now to, uh, to 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 complete this integral in a simple way, we can make this the geometric uh, substitution that relates sine squared of theta, like we have here, with cosine. <coughs> with cosine of two times that theta um, in this simple way. So if we make that substitution for sine squared of theta, um, then we get uh, sine squared of n pi x over L becomes one half times one minus cosine of two n pi x over L. And then if we do the integral, uh, from the first term here we get x over two. From the second term we get a, uh, the integral of cosine is a sine and then we basically have to do um, take a, uh, you know, we have to deal with the argument here, L over uh, 2n pi, and we evaluate that integral from between 0 and L, okay, and um, when we do that, I've just done it explicitly here just, just once so that we can see what's going on, so x over 2 evaluated at L is obviously L over 2. This term evaluated at L gives us sine of 2n pi L over L, which is equal to sine of 2n pi which is zero, right? Because uh, n is an integer, so that's like sine of two pi, four pi, etc., and that's equal to zero, as I've written here. Okay. Um, then you evaluate uh, x over two at zero, you get zero, and then you evaluate sine of two uh, n pi x over l at zero. That's sine of zero, and that's again equal to zero. So what you end up what you end up with is just the first term l over two, and so uh, you have that. Uh, a n squared times L over 2 is equal to 1. All right, and therefore a n is equal to root 2 over L. And now if we write our wave functions, we now have normalized wave functions. And so we have our, our, our coefficient here is 2 over L, and you, uh, root 2 over L, and you notice that it's independent of n. So we have the same coefficient in this case for each, um, the same amplitude coefficient for each wave function and now sine of n pi x over L. And so in the end, these are finally the um, 